Now let's see the substitution method in brief by taking an example problem. So initially, let me take the two lines, say my line L1, which I consider as 2x minus y minus 5 equal to 0, and my line L2, which I consider as 3x plus 2y minus 11 equal to 0. Then I wanted to find the intersection or the solution of the two lines L1 and L2, that is indirectly, I want to find the values of x and y using the substitution method. So let's see how substitution method can be used. So initially to start with, I take each of the lines separately. My line L1, which is 2x minus y minus 5 equal to 0. And my next line L2 is 3x plus 2y minus 11 equal to 0. Now, the substitution method says that we need to substitute one of the variable in the other. In, we have to bring in one variable into other variable form and then substitute in one of the equation. Say for example, I take this being coefficient of y being 1, I always find this to be easier. Therefore, I'll bring this to the right. So I get this as y equals 2x minus 5. So in substitution method, I always suggest choose that value to be substituted, which has coefficient as 1, which will always be easier. Now, because the coefficient of y is 1, this is the most suitable variable which can be substituted in the other equation, making the simplification easier. This is the rule which one must follow in substitution method. So when I take y as 2x minus 5, then this is 3x plus 2y minus 11 equal to 0. Then I substitute y equal to 2x minus y 5 in place of this y of the next equation. So the y which is extracted from the first line is substituted in the second line in place of that. Hence, this method is called substitution because we are simply substituting one of the value into the other equation. So in this case, 3x plus 2 times of y, which is nothing but this, minus 11 is equal to 0. So this is how I get by substituting one of them in the other equation. Therefore, this on simplification further gives me 3x plus 2 times of 2, which is 4x, minus 2 times of 5, which is minus 10, minus 11, equals 0. Then finally, this would be 3x plus 4x, which is 7x minus 21 equals 0. Therefore, taking all x terms one side and all the constants to the other side, I get x is 21 over 7, this coming down for the 7 ones, 7 threes. Therefore, I got x equal to 3 is the value of x. Now, once I substitute this x in this, I get y. Therefore, substituting in this equation, therefore, my y, which is 2x minus 5, will just get substituted with x equals 3. And then I get 2 times of 3 minus 5, 6 minus 5, which is 1. Therefore, y equal to 1. So, x equal to 3 and y equal to 1 are the solutions of the given lines L1 and L2 using the substitution method. A substitution method which is done in this following manner. Now let's see the elimination method which can be used for the example problem which I consider. And we'll see the rules involved in the elimination method used to find the values of x and y, the solutions of the linear equations in two variables x and y. To start with an example problem, let me take the line 1 as 3x plus 2y equals minus 11 equals 0 and my line L2 which equals 2x plus 3y minus 4 equal to 0. Now these are the two lines for which I would like to find the solution using of course the elimination method. 
So in elimination method, I try to take all constants to the right so that my line L1 gets reduced to 3x plus 2y equals 11 and 2x plus 3y equals 4 as from L1 and L2 respectively. Then I use one line over the other. The next step what I include is I take one equation over the other. So first equation is this which I have taken then the next equation I take over this. Now as I see the first rule the, the most important rule in the elimination method is that the values of either x or y that is the coefficients of x or y must be made to be same. Now as I see here the coefficient of x is 3 and the coefficient of x is 2 which are not equal to each other. Similarly when I take the coefficient of y as 2 and coefficient of y as 3 are also not equal. Therefore our attempt is to make the coefficients equal of either x or y. The choice is with the student. So let me try to make the coefficients of y as equal as can be seen here. So to make the coefficients of y equal, what I do is I multiply this equation with this. And here I multiply with this times of 2. So the rule is we can make the two coefficients equal either of x or y if I multiply this to the first equation and this to the second equation. Finally, we get a common term either for x or y which we are going to target. Now my target here is y. Therefore, I have multiplied 2 to the second equation and 3 to the first equation this is how I do. Similarly, when I want to make x equal, I multiply 3 to the second equation and 2 to the first equation and then make x terms equal or the coefficients of x equal. Now because my target here is to make the coefficients of y equal, I multiplied this 3 here and this two out here simultaneously alternately for one over the other. Now this when multiplied gives me 3 times of 3 which is 9x plus 3 times of 2 which is 6y is 3 times of 11 which is 33. So I have multiplied the constant 3 to the entire equation 1. So this forms equation 1. Similarly I have multiplied 2 to the entire equation, second equation. So 2 times of 2x is 4x plus 2 times of 3y is 6y is 2 times of 4 equal to 8, which is second equation. As you can see here clearly with the two equations, I have made this equal is what is the destination. To make this equal, I have multiplied simultaneously. And this is the most important step in elimination method making one of the coefficients equal is a must for eliminating and finding the values of x and y. So once I make the coefficients of y as equal then immediately I just subtract because both plus if I subtract they get cancelled. So this becomes minus, this becomes minus, this becomes minus. All the signs become opposite and then the subtraction gives me this as 0 because 6y minus 6y is 0 and 9x minus 4x is 5x. 33 minus 8 is 25 is what I get in the elimination process. The intention of making the coefficients equal is now clearly understood because once I make the coefficients equal when I subtract they get cancelled and I get only one variable. This reduces to a linear equation in one variable x which is easy to be found using the constant method by taking the constants to the right and variables to the left. It's easy for finding the solution for linear equation in one variable. Therefore, when I proceed to the next step, 5x equal to 25 implies x is 25 over 5 which is 5. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 5. So that implies my x is 5. Now once I got the value of x, I'm going to find the value of y by substituting in one of the lines, this or this. So as I identify, I observe one thing that my substitution of x in which equation would be easier is what I identify when I substitute. So always choose that equation which has simpler values 
but do not choose an equation which has more larger values because the simplification is time consuming. Therefore, I take the easiest of these two equations which I identify as here because this seems to be looking quite easier. So, I substitute in that equation which looks smaller. So, here the equation is 2x plus 3y equal to 4 where I substitute the value of x equal to 5. So, when I substitute the value of x equal to 5 plus 3y equal to 4, then 2 5 is 10 plus 3y equals 4. Then this would be 4 minus 10 is minus 6. Therefore, y is minus 6 over 3. So, which clearly gives me negative 6 over 3 when 3 is brought to the right. Therefore, this would be 3 1s, 3 2s. That implies y is minus 2 and x is 5 is how we find the values of x and y the solutions of linear equations by using the elimination method with all its rules out here. Now the third method is the graphical method through which we solve the given linear equations in two variables x and y. Now the graphical method has already been discussed in the previous sessions where the two lines are sketched on the graph and then the two lines when the point where they intersect will be the point which gives us the solution. The x coordinate of the point of intersection is the x value of the solving of x and y and the y coordinate will give us the y value of the solution of the given linear equations. So it's very simple but we need to be very careful when we sketch because when we draw the graph on the graph paper for the lines L1 and L2 we need to be very precise. The minute mistake might make a minute difference, a large difference in the values of x coordinate and the y coordinate which we get as the point of intersection of the two lines. Therefore, the graphical method has already been discussed. Now, let's try to do one interesting problem which is a pure application of mathematics in our everyday life. When we go to the bank, we exchange notes, we see many situations where we are puzzled because say for example I go to the bank and just I draw around 2000 rupees then the banker gives me few of the 100 rupees notes and the 500 rupees notes then in that case we don't know how many 500 and how many 100 rupees notes are given so that I get the total of 2000 rupees. So we are going to do a problem where we can solve the pro problem of identifying the number of 100 rupees notes or the number of 500 rupees notes which are given by the banker in the total sum of 2000 rupees. So such daily life applications are various in linear equations. So many applications through which one main application which we are going to do as an example problem. So here, let's see one of the problem which supports applications of linear equations in a pure daily life. So for example, I have a question or a problem which says, Snigda went to a bank to draw rupees 2000, went to bank to draw rupees 2000. She was given 25 notes of rupees 50 and rupees 100 denomination. Now here the interesting part of mathematics used is I wanted to know how many 100 rupees notes and how many 50 rupee notes did Snigna get from the banker? In the total amount she's drawing was 2000 rupees. So the question here is how many 50 notes and 100 notes? So how many notes of rupees 50 and rupees 100 notes did Snigna get from the banker is the question.
Now this question is interesting because we come across such situations many a times when we go to the bank or we go to the vegetable vendors to buy some vegetables or to any other shop where we do a lot of shopping through money exchange. And therefore we need to identify strictly its application in mathematics especially in linear equations connected to daily life. So let's start with the clear picture of what is given. Totally Snigda gets 2000 rupees from the bank. She has been given 25 notes of 50 denomination and 100 denomination. Thirdly, I want to know how many 50 no rupee notes and 100 rupee notes did she get from the banker. So initially, I see that total amount Snigda draws from bank is clearly given to be rupees 2000 but the question here is we don't know how many 50 rupees notes or how many 100 rupees notes she is getting so because we don't know the exact picture of the number of 50 and 100 rupees notes in denomination given by the banker i assume them as x and y the unknowns so here let x equal to number of rupees 50 notes as given by the banker and let y be the number of rupees 100 notes denomination notes as given by the banker so here my destination is to find x and y which is nothing but finding the solution of the linear equations l1 and l2 so let's see how we can frame the linear equations L1 and L2 using the minimum conditions. Now clearly as I see here the number of 50 rupee notes are x and number of 100 rupee notes are y. So totally Snigda is getting 25 notes from the banker which clearly makes me understand that on the whole x plus y is equal to 25 because the total number of notes the only note she is getting is 50 denomination and 100 denomination. Therefore the sum of these must be equal to 25 the total number of notes she is receiving by the banker so clearly total notes total number of notes snigda gets is 25 that implies clearly x plus y is equal to 25 which is the first linear equation in two variables x and y I identify from the given problem. Similarly, let's see how the second equation is obtained. So as I clearly see that the total amount she is drawing is 2000 rupees. So total amount being 2000 rupees gives me the clear picture that if there are x notes of 50 rupees which she is receiving then 50 times of x plus 100 times of y will be equal to 2000. So therefore I get this equation because I get x is number of 50 rupees notes so we don't know how many 50 rupees notes are there so 50 rupee notes taken x times plus 100 rupees notes taken y times will totally give me the total amount Snigda is drawing from the banker. So when I add up 50x plus 100y equal to 2000 is what I get as the second linear equation. But when I further simplify this, I divide with 50 so that I get this is what I get. as the linear equation when I divide the whole equation with 50 I get x plus 2y equals 40 which is the second linear equation. Now once I get the two equations solving of these two equations is a choice to the student because the question doesn't mention about whether I had to use the substitution method or the elimination method or the graphical method. So the choice is strictly with me in the method I am using. So clearly I identify that substitution method is very easy here because 
the coefficient of x or y is 1. So remember substitution method helps only when the coefficients of x or y is 1. At least one of the coefficients of x or y is 1 unity. Now because this clearly makes us with coefficient of y is 1, I think substitution method would be more easier in case of this example problem. So let's see how substitution method can be used to find the values of x and y. So from 1, if I just say my y is 25 minus x because I bring x to the right, it becomes this is what I get. And substituting this y in equation 2, then I clearly get x plus 2y. In place of y, I have this substituted 25 minus x is equal to 40 is what I get when I substitute in place of y as 25 minus x. Now this is reduced to a linear equation in one variable x which is very easy to simplify. So let's expand with the brackets that implies x plus 2 times of 25 which is 50 minus 2 times of x minus 2x is 40 which on further simplification gives me x minus 2x is minus x and 40 plus 50 comes to the right as minus 50 is what I get when I further simplify. Then finally this gets reduced to minus x equals 40 minus 50 is negative 10. Therefore cancelling minus on both sides I finally get x equal to 10 which in turn gives me the value of y because when I substitute x equal to 10 here I get the value of y. So this value when substituted in 1 I get y equals 25 minus x which is 10 which is 15. That implies I got the two values one is x and one is y which give us the answer. So therefore when Snigda has drawn 2000 rupees the banker has given her 1050 rupee notes and 1500 rupee notes so that when you add up you get 2000 on the whole. So therefore I can say therefore Stigda got 10 rupee 50 notes and 15 rupee 100 notes from banker. From the banker she got 1050 rupee notes and 1500 rupee notes from the banker when she drew the total amount of 2000 rupees is how we understand the linear equations connected to the real life applications of linear equations using mathematics. Now let's try to solve few of the linear equations which are not directly given in linear form. That is we're going to see the session where we're going to reduce the equations into linear form. Sometimes it is essential. So let's take the topic of the day says equations reducible to linear form which are not directly in the linear form. Equations reducible to linear form is what we are going to see. So let's see how the nonlinear equations are reduced to the linear form and then solved indirectly for the nonlinear equations. Sometimes it is possible. Say for example, I take the problem 2 by x plus 3 over y equals 13 and say I take the another equation 5 over x minus 4 over y equals minus 2. So these are the two equations with the condition of course being that x and y are non-zero because if x and y being in the denominator are zeros the whole of the equations will not be defined. Therefore we have non-zero solutions for this kind of an example. But initially to start with my question is why are these two equations not linear? 
let's recap with the definition of linear equations as we have identified that linear equations are the polynomials the linear polynomials whose powers are integral non-negative integral powers clearly I see that if I write this 2 by x as 2x inverse then this is a negative integral power the rule says non-negative integral power which, which is not the case in this therefore equations of this type are called non-linear equations of course in two variables x and y so let's see how we can convert these non-linear equations into linear form and then solve the linear form indirectly giving us the solutions of the given non-linear equations so the first rule for this says that if I have my equation 1 and equation 2 respectively taken for the given problem then for the first equation And the second equation 5 by x minus 4 over y equals negative 2 <coughs> I will let 1 by x is equal to some p and 1 by y is equal to some q is how I let the two equations so when I take 1 by x equal to p and 1 by y equal to p implies I can write the two equations in the form 2 times 1 by x which is p therefore 2 by x which I can write it as 2 times of 1 by x can be substituted as p because 1 by x is assumed to be p therefore this equation reduces to 2p plus similarly 3 by y can be written as 3 times of 1 by y which is q therefore 3 by y can be written as 3 cube which equals 13 is what we get the linear form of the equations 1 and 2 similarly when I take the second equation 5 by x reduces to 5p <coughs> minus 4q equals minus 2 and this would give me equation 3 and equation 4 <coughs> clearly equation 3 and equation 4 are linear equations in two variables p and q the variables here are assumed to be p and q and since each of the powers of p and q are ones which are non-negative integral powers therefore these two equations are very much linear equations in variables p and q so now our destination here is to solve these two equations and find the values of p and q the method of solving can be either the substitution method or the elimination method or the graphical method now clearly i see that substitution method would not be an easy task because the coefficients of p and q are not one therefore i try to solve this by using the elimination method which is the most effective method of all the three methods so in order to use the elimination method to recap with the session we need to make one of the coefficients equal so let me try to make the coefficients of q to be equal so that this is multiplied here and this is multiplied here and I get the coefficients equal so let's see what equations do I get when I multiply whole of equation 3 with 4 and whole of equation 4 with 3 so 4 multiplied with 2p gives me 8p and 4 multiplied with 3q gives me 12q and 4 multiplied with 13 gives me 52 similarly 3 multiplied with 5p gives me 15p and 3 multiplied with 4q gives 12q and therefore 3 times of minus 2 which is minus 6 clearly makes these two coefficients equal differing by a sign which is not a restriction now since these two coefficients are equal differing by a sign therefore this can be eliminated or cancelled if I add so that 8p plus 15p would give me 23p 
in addition and this gets cancelled because 12q plus of minus 12q will just eliminate the q term is the reason why I have used the elimination method and 52 minus 6 would give me 46 and with this I get 23p equal to 46 which in turn gives me the value of p as 46 over 23 once and twice 23 times of 2 is 46 therefore I get the value of p as 2 is what I get when I substitute in elimination method now the next question here is that I have to find the value of q using the value of p so I substitute in one of the equation which is very simple therefore I substitute this in equation 4 substituting p is equal to 2 in equation 4 I get this as 5p minus 4 times of 5 times of 2 minus 4 times of q is equal to minus 2 is what is the equation obtained with p equals to 2 substituted in the equation now this is 5 times of 2 10 minus 4q is equal to minus 2 which in turn gives me minus 4q when substituted here as minus 12 is what I get out here therefore the value of q here is minus 12 over minus 4 which on further simplification gives me the value as 3 now I got the value of p is 2 and the value of q is 3 which I am going to substitute in the assumptions indirectly giving me the values of x and y 1 by x equal to p so that 1 by x equal to p which is obtained as 2 therefore this implies 1 by x is 2 which on cross multiplication gives me x equal to 1 by 2 similarly I have 1 by y equal to q which on substitution of the value q as obtained gives me the value of 1 by y equals 3 that implies y equals 1 by 3 so my x is 1 by 2 and y is 1 by 3 is the required solution of the nonlinear equations in x and y so a nonlinear equation when reduced to the linear form and then its solutions substituted in the assumption indirectly gives me the solution of the nonlinear equations thus the topic equations reducible to linear form is possible in this manner.